Hello, and welcome back to another Create My Tutorial. Today, this is kind of just a guide on everything that you need to know about what the Create Mod adds with Redstone. This guide already assumes you know a little bit about vanilla Redstone, like what comparators or repeaters or Redstone lamps or levers do. Um, if you don't know those, look for another like vanilla tutorial. Uh, but if you do, then you're in the right place. So we're going to be going over a couple of different things. I'm going to have chapters in the description and on the video so you can skip to ones that you're more confused about. We're going to be going over the analog lever, the pulse repeater, the pulse extender, redstone links, the powered latch and powered toggle latch, smart observer, and threshold switch. So without further ado, let's get into it. First off is the analog lever. This thing is basically a lever that you can specifically set the power levels of. So you see I clicked it once and it set this redstone dust to a power level of one. If I set this to a few more, it will turn on the redstone lamp. If you continue right clicking and get it all the way to the end, you can see that it produces an output of 15 and will power something up to 15 blocks away. The way to get this down is by shift right clicking. That will lower the power level and you turn it off by shift right clicking it all the way down back to zero. The crafting is pretty simple. It's just an andesite casing and a stick. You just need a two block crafting area, so you can do this in your inventory as well. Moving on to the pulse repeater, this thing is pretty neat. It basically just delays the signal that it gets. So if we flick this lever, you can see in 30 ticks, this redstone lamp will turn on. If you right click on the repeater, at least in the create mod 5.0 version, you should be able to access the GUI, which lets you change the interval from all the way to two ticks to 60 minutes. And that will obviously delay the amount of time it takes for this thing to actually work. If we set it to three seconds or something like that, you can see it takes quite a while longer and then powers at once. If we leave this thing on, it will still only power at once, which can be useful for some clocks and stuff like that. Additionally, if you just right click it, it will turn it on forever. This redstone lamp thingy kind of at the end of this will just stay on and you can turn it off by right clicking it again. The crafting recipe is pretty simple. It's just a redstone dust, brass sheet, redstone torch, and any stone block that you'd like. Normal stone works, as you can see, as well as granite, andesite, diorite, and I think normal deep slate as well. And you need a two by three area to craft it. Next up is the pulse extender. This thing is a little bit similar to the pulse repeater, at least in looks, but it does a lot of different things. You can see here that it is set to 20 ticks. So if we flick this lever, you can see that this redstone lamp stays on quite a bit longer than how long we turn on this lever. That's because the pulse extender, aptly named, extends the redstone signal to the duration you set it to. Same with the redstone repeater. You can right click on it and get into the interval timing section. You can go from two ticks all the way up to 60 minutes. And if let's say we set it for five seconds, you can see that it will wait five seconds and then turn off. If you are to keep this lever on, it will always be powered. The only time it takes into account this five seconds is when you start to turn it off. So after this point, it will start counting down the five seconds and then turn off the redstone lamp. The way you craft it is almost identical to the pulse repeater. You just add another redstone torch up in the top right. Again, you can use any stone block here. Moving on now to the redstone links. This basically just introduces wireless redstone. So as you can see here, we have a redstone link here and one over here. All we have to do is power this redstone link and then set this one to receive mode by right clicking on it with a wrench and it will transmit the wireless signal. It works similarly to a lever. As you can see, it is placed on this redstone lamp block and will power the ones directly adjacent to it, but not ones diagonal. If we replace this with a lever, you can see that it does the exact same thing. The redstone links also have a red and blue square here, which lets you set the filter options. If let's say we put a just redstone lamp in the top red part here, you can now see that this is no longer powered. The way to power it is by placing a similar redstone lamp in the top red part here, which will repower it. If we take the red out of that, this will depower. If we put it in the blue, it will not power. So you can set up a lot of different combinations of signals so that it doesn't mix up. And the way to copy it is just by copying the two items in here and placing it on whatever thing you're trying to make receive. 
It is pretty simple to craft. It just requires one brass casing and a redstone torch. It has some other functionality that I learned just kind of by accident and is really interesting. So if you remember, the analog lever just lets you set the redstone output that you would like. So if I right click this once, it will set the output to one. This was then powering this redstone link with a redstone dust in the red part here. If we go over to this redstone link set to receive mode already with the redstone dust in the red, we can see that the power output is of power level one, which means that the redstone links save the power level data. And if we turn up this analog lever to two, now this redstone link is outputting two. Another fun thing you can do if I set another redstone link down here, set to receive mode, this one power output can transmit to as many redstone link receives as you want. This is also true in the reverse direction. If we have two redstone links set to transmit mode, we can power both of them or one of them, and it will power all of the receive redstone links that you have set to the same frequency. The one with the higher power input takes priority. So as you can see here, both of these are set to redstone power level 15, which corresponds to this lever here. And if we turn this off, nothing over here will change. The final thing I think we need to consider is, let's say this analog lever is powering this redstone link. If it is set to receive mode, it will not be powered. The receive mode only lets it be powered by something that is set to the normal transmit mode and is powered, as you can see. Moving on now to the powered toggle latch. This thing is pretty cool. It's basically a one block T flip flop, if you know what that is. Basically, you just power it once and it will stay powered forever. If you power it again, it will turn off. This one is kind of the, the basic one that you would need for a couple of redstone contraptions and it would make a lot of vanilla contraptions a little bit smaller and is pretty useful. You can also, if you right click on the powered toggle latch itself, can turn it on and off from here. And that's pretty much it. It is craftable by three stone blocks, which includes granite, andesite, diorite, and deep slate, as well as a lever and a redstone torch on top of it. The more interesting one, at least in my opinion, is the powered latch. This thing is almost identical to the powered toggle latch, but as you can see from the crafting recipe, has some redstone on either side. If we power it, it will do the same thing as the powered toggle latch, but if we unpower it and repower it from the back, nothing happens. This is because we need to power it from the side, which is why these redstone is here, to reset it. Let's say that we have it powered from the back and then we add another lever here. It will now turn off. This is super useful in clock-based designs, where if you want, you can have it go crazy or you can combine it with the pulse extender and pulse repeater to make a variable timed clock. This thing is super cool. So as long as you keep the input powered, it will infinitely make a clock. The only thing you need to change is this pulse repeater. If you extend it to let's say 28 ticks, it will now go every 28 ticks. And I've used this for pretty much every single one of my tutorials. It makes iron farms and cobblestone generators in general super, super useful. And obviously you can just turn off the clock by turning off the input. And after one more rotation, it will stop. Moving on, something I like a lot is the smart observer. This thing is kind of strange. Like a normal observer, it detects if a block is in front of it. But unlike a normal does observer, does not power when anything is in front of it. The only way for this thing to power and detect something is if you set its filter. So if I set the filter to a redstone lamp and place a redstone lamp in front of it, it will power the line behind it. Interestingly, again, unlike the normal observer, it doesn't just do a one tick pulse and it doesn't check for when it was placed and when it breaks. It just checks if the block in front of it is the block in its filter and outputs a redstone signal. As you can see here, the redstone lamp in front of it is also powered, meaning that this smart observer is just a block of power, which is pretty interesting. If let's say we place something not set to the filter in front of it, it will not power. This is used if you watch my create mod series to make the dirt farm. It checks to see if there is coarse dirt in front of it, which will power something and turn it into normal dirt, which will then depower it and is very cool. 
the crafting recipe is pretty simple, just an observer, brass casing, an electron tube, and a three tall line. The final thing we're going to cover today is the threshold switch. This thing is basically a comparator in one block that is a little bit better in my opinion. It can be placed really in any position here, be placed under it, and still check the amount of items in the inventory that you connect it to. In this chest, I have a stack of sticks. And in the threshold switch, you can see that there is a red bar indicating the amount that the chest is full. If you right click on a threshold switch, it will bring you into this inventory. This is a little bit confusing, so try to stay with me. The top line tells you how full does this have to be to power on. If, let's say, we fill up the chest with a bunch of sticks, this will now power on because as you can see, the chest marker here is past the threshold line, meaning that it will power on. Once it is powered, it will wait until the chest is only 25% full to unpower. So if we take out a stack of, or a row of sticks, this will still be powered. As you can see, it is still above the 25% threshold. If we take out another percent, you can see it is below and it is powered off. If, let's say, you want this to be powered until there is 50% of the sticks in, you can just click this invert signal button, which whenever you don't have 50% in there, it will power. This is super good for things like funnels and stuff or shoots that require a constant redstone signal to not drop items. What I did here is I just moved the threshold switch and added a brass funnel, which as you can see is powered and is not dropping any items. If let's say we fill this chest up, it will start to drop items until the chest is below the 25% threshold. And that's probably what most people are going to use it for, which is the once inverted signal so that this bottom line is powered. If your brass funnel keeps dropping stuff, it is probably that this is just not set. Let's talk about what the heck these lines are for. These things, as you might have been able to guess, are the thresholds that you're letting it. So before it was set to 50 and 25%. If you scroll, you can change it to lower or higher. And this decides at what fill level your inventory or chest that it is connected to is at. So if we up this to 100%, you can see that this chest needs to be completely filled before any sticks are dropped out of it. Even if we put in 63, it will not power. It is at 99%, but it still won't power. But if we add in the final stick, it will. The second threshold is the when to stop threshold. So it will stop now once the chest is at 30% full. So if we add in this final stick, it will start dropping and will drop until the chest is only 30% full. This is really useful for farms or anything else that need a constant supply of what it's producing. So let's say the dirt farm, it produces dirt, but you need dirt to make dirt. So I always save about 20% of my dirt in the chest and leave the remaining dirt that has been made and send it back to my storage system. As you can see, this finished and was sent back up here, meaning that it is now powered and not dropping any more items. And this chest is now about 30% full. And that is going to be it for this redstone guide and walkthrough. Let me know if I missed anything or you have anything that you want to add. But I think I covered this pretty well and pretty quickly. So thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like and consider subscribing. I'll see you all next time. Peace.